Today, I plan to take a day trip to some unique hidden travel spots in Chiba, Japan. Chiba is one of three prefectures in the Kanto region, located southeast of Tokyo. It has many infrastructure serving Tokyo, such as Narita International Airport and Tokyo Disneyland. Yes, you heard right, Tokyo Disneyland. Is actually in Chiba Prefecture. Chiba is surrounded by sea on three sides, forming the Boso Peninsula. This is Chiba's most significant geographical feature. Additionally, it has no mountains over 500 meters. The northern part is part of the Kanto Plain, with large fields and residential areas. Overall, Chiba is quite large. On this day trip, I plan to visit three places and hope to see them all. I will put Google Map links for all locations in the video description. Chiba has a typical peninsula feature, surrounded by the sea on the three sides. To the west is Tokyo Bay, and to the east is Pacific Ocean, with a very long coastline. One of the most famous is Kuchukuri Beach. The longest beach in Japan, where the surfing competition of the 2020 Olympics was held. But to avoid the crowds, I searched for a place where only locals go. So I come to the seaside of Ubara Risokyo. Ubara Risokyo is located in southeastern part of the Ubara area, near the Ubara coast. It is on the west side. Of Katsuura Bay along the Pacific Ocean, with rugged capes forming a complex coastline known as the Rias Coast. This area has a beach selected as one of the Japan's top 100 beaches. Ubara Beach, which is a famous scenic spot and a part of the Minami Boso National Park, the bay is covered with trees and coastal plants. Extending to the type of the cape, the complex natural scenery has attracted many literary figures, leaving many works behind. It is a breathtaking natural beauty due to its beautiful scenery. It was planned as a villa area with Taisho period, hence the name Risokyo, meaning ideal village. From JR Ubara Station, walk about 150 meters towards the sea at the T junction. Turn left towards the turn. After passing the first and second turns, turn right and walk about 170 meters along the gentle slope to the entrance. While passing through the turn, you can see the red carps in the stream next to it. I'm not sure what type of the carps they are, but they look like sea carps. By the way, today I come here with my girlfriend, Lani. She has low stamina and is not good at hiking. After passing through the second tunnel, there is a steep uphill road that exists here. But along the way, the sunlight passes through the small forest, and creating tangible effects on the hiking trail made us feel it was worth it. After passing through the small forests and the sea rockets eroded by the waves, you will reach the top. On the way up, you can always hear the sound of the waves hitting the rocks. Taoyame Daira. From the entrance, walk about 700 meters uphill to the ridge and observation deck. At the top of the, there is a monument with a bell known as the Bell of the Happiness. In December 2017, the Ubara Risokyo Yamayuri Association discovered it, fragments of the Jomon Portal and registered it as the site in Chiba Prefecture. In March 2018, named the Ubara Taoyama Daira Site. Due to its special terrain. You can capture mountains, the sea, and forests all at once. 
I take out my Fujifilm camera and show these photos. To the east, there is an underwater observation tower you can enter and visit by a ticket. There is mist floating over the sea, and I take out my drone and capture this scene. Going further would lead to Twilight Hill, Shilafusa Cape, Yojin Cape, and other places. If you like hiking and want a less intense climb, this route might be very well. But for us, Lani is already tired and the temperature reached 35 degrees Celsius today. So I decided to return to the car the same way we came. Then I went to Tsukisaki Terminal, a sport recommended by locals. If you take a train, you can take the Kominato line and get off at Tsukisaki Station. Then walk 15 to 20 minutes to reach a fork in the road. This place is not well known. After entering, you are on the Japanese forest path. So the road is narrow and not suitable for cars. There are also no entry sign at the entrance. So I park the car and walk. There is a stream along the road, giving you a sense of being in the mountains. The path is mostly flat, with no steep slopes, making it not too difficult for beginners like me. I even saw someone riding a motorcycle. Many Japanese people come here for sightseeing. Deeper in, on the left, there are tall trees and fallen branches. On the right, a huge rock wall extends upward, with the sound of birds all around. After passing through, you will see Tsukisaki Tunnel. It is a tunnel with no waterproofing or support. Water constantly drips from the walls to the ground, even though it looks unsafe. It feels like being in a magical mountain forest. The second part of the tunnel is longer and dark. With the sound of dripping water inside, it feels a bit scary to walking through. But once you pass, you reach the end. Overall, if you want to visit Chiba and go to places only locals know and you like original mountains forests, this is a good choice. Also, because Chiba is mostly flat, there are no bears here, which is rare in Japan. Even in Tokyo's mountain, you might see bears. Japan does quite well in nature conservation. I originally planned to visit the third spot, Kujukutani Observation Park on Mount Kanozan, where you can see a sea of clouds at sunset. However, while on the way, I realized that it would take another hour to get there, and it was already almost 6 pm, since I planned to return on the same day. I decided to head back. Although it was a pity not to reach the last spot, trips are like this, full of uncertainties. Sometimes the unexpected surprises are also part of the trip's charm. On the way back, I noticed the nearby scenery was getting beautiful. Like this seaside, sunset and the beach are always the best condition. Finally, I come across this unnamed field. Its quiet atmosphere attracted me. As the sun was setting, I decided to fly my drone here and capture this sight.
these shorts made me very satisfied. The mist enveloped the fields and paths, reflecting the sunset's afterglow. If you also plan to come to the Chiba and have time to visit Kujugutani on Mount Kanozan, remember to take a photo and tag me. I will give it a like. So that's all I want to share. Thank you for watching and see you next time.